So, um, first of all, happy to have you all with us. And Shakira, David, I didn't uh, register last time when you joined us on the Zoom meeting. Actually, you wrote to myself and to Goswami Maharaj a little yes. while ago. And yes, so Maharaj. We're very happy. And you definitely have Goswami Maharaj's support. And oh, you just you. asked me to, to do the savor of reply. And actually, we've been doing replying seva for many years on behalf of Srila Guru Maharaj, Srila Shira Maharaj, of Srila Govinda Maharaj, Srila Gurudev, and of course, on behalf of so many devotees. We are representing others. We are not a standalone entity. So here we are with our back to back the basics. And today, we have volunteers. Abhinava Sunda Prabhu and Kelly, they are happy volunteers, I can see by their faces, to share something with us about uh, every day in our devotional life, in the temples at least, and really I th I'm sure at home you have an altar, you're doing a little puja. So today they're going to give us a little uh, uh, insight or well, whatever the word may be, some explanation to help us understand what we say. The key Jai prayers, Jai Saparika, Shri Shri Guru Gauranga Gandhava Govinda Sunda, Jai Sapa Shad Shri Nityananda Prabhu, etc. We say it very easily and very quickly, and some Pujaris say it very quickly. And actually, I have a recording of Mongol Maharaj in Vrindavan last year, last year, 2019, yes. Last year, reciting extensive jais, literally five minutes long, but actually very happy because he's actually chanting that the parakrama of Vrindavan and the various deities and places, the parakrama of uh, Puri, places, deities and places, parakrama of Nabadeep, various places and names. So, I mean, really, it is actually a, a very very happy Kijai to hear, but not necessarily or certainly not that we will say five minutes of Kijai after every program. <laughs> but it's good to know what we're saying. All right, so we're five minutes in. So whoever's with us is with us. And first of all, oh, well, not first of all, but just while we have the opportunity. So where's Jai Kumar Prabhu? Is he? At home, or is he is he doctoring somewhere? Charu, he has gone out. He'll join uh, within a few minutes, Maharaj. He'll join. Okay, now. okay. So look forward to having him come with us too. Yeah. All right. So first, we've come together. Let us give our obeisances. The devotees are an ocean of mercy. Please give mercy. Hare Krishna. So, today we'll hear something about the Jayadvani, the, the key Jai prayers. So, who is going to speak first? Kelly or Abhinavasunda Prabhu? No. <laughs> <laughs> She's the main speaker. No, I'm not the main speaker. Um, well, I guess um recently i've been attempting to fill in and do a little bit of the um puja saver at sri govinda dam here in australia and um the key jai is each i mean some of it makes sense to me and then there's been all sorts um of words that I haven't um, known what they mean. And so we were just mentioning that to Maharaj. And so he <laughs> very kindly suggested that we try to say something about it <laughs> in the deep end. So um, anyway, we listened, Maharaj sent us a file, um, an audio file, uh, which we've been listening to. And um, it's actually an old, class that um, Shripad Tyagi Maharaj gave and though he didn't actually get a lot of the way through explaining um, 
all the various pronouns, but um, there were some very beautiful explanations like right at the beginning. Um, what I really liked is she was talking about even the word Jai um, because there's so many things that are um, part of our like Vaishnava culture that we say and do all the time, but maybe, um, oh, Kum Kum Didi Did. <laughs> yes, she's her sound is off. Um, and so just even to think about what Jai means, and um, I haven't memorized all these things, but I took a few notes um, to kind of jog my memory. Um, so I'll just sort of share a few points and maybe I'll be another can as well. So um, in Sanskrit and Bengali, Jai means to be in a state um, above all others and more specifically to be victorious or triumphant um, or have like some sort of like a one's prevailing influence over others or situations and um, therefore like Jai itself can actually summarize the whole of Krishna consciousness because um, the Lord Sri Krishna is that he actually is the one where that everything is coming from his Leela pervades all time and space and that is actually being felt and observed um, in the hearts and the vision of the devotees of the Vaishnavas and um, therefore they say Jai um, victory, um, yeah, may his auspicious influence be victorious and prevail over all, um, which is kind of a nice reminder um, for me anyway. Um, that even to say Jai is a very powerful and auspicious thing and that, if, right. and that if we can really be attentive while we're saying Jai, then the the... the import of that is is substantial in itself yeah exactly um yeah and maharaj made the point to say like if we're we're considering that everything is for the lord and we exist for his satisfaction and that that feeling that mood that prayer could be completely captured in one word jai um and that if we can actually wake up in the morning and give jai um that all our thoughts words and deeds may be offered to the lord then yeah it's very um there's a lot in it and that was that's an inter that's a nice process to discover that in our um what is it called the jai advani jai advani um when you start to unpack it there's so much in it and then it becomes more meaningful than when we offer those key jays. So, um, and anyone can interrupt, by the way, these are just points as we go through. So, um, what else did he say? Oh, um, that there's sort of, you could say that there's, um, three aspects to jai. Um, one is to praise and acknowledge its victory and excellence. Um, so for example, like classically when a king would enter his court, um, to acknowledge his reign, then all of the, um, what Citizens they call the or... subjects, um, would give Jai to, um, acknowledging his reign and, um, can also mean, uh, the demonst to acknowledge the demonstration of um, that reign over others. So when Krishna enters the court of Kongsa, then everyone's shouting Jai, 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 Jai. Um, and they're, they're saying, let, um, oh, sorry. Phone's ringing. Um, yeah, let, let him be victorious over me. Um, and then also that Jai is like a prayerful offering and that before we begin any type of, um, devotional activity, we first offer Jai to, um, whom that activity is 
meant to please. Um, oh, and also that jai's when we give um, jai is not actually something that's rigid, like we have to say it like this, and then it has to be like that. Um, and an example was given that um, because normally we offer Kijais to the deity first and then our Guru Vaga. Uh, but, and maybe Maharaj, you can um, say if this is correct or not, but Gurudev, um, Tyagi Maharaj was saying that he would actually give um, Jai to Guru Maharaj first. That was his particular, and I was trying to think, I, I can't remember. And then to the deities, that was just his own, feeling is that correct uh it may be my really i mean yeah. certainly when he's giving class etc i mean when he's giving talking his class is generally you know informal but in the end of oh, yes we can say he's giving jai to guru maharaj and but then i'm wondering on an official like puja of the deities he may give jai to the deity first Right. But the thing is, have we seen Gurudev, or well, we haven't seen him doing puja today, we've not seen him, seen him in the temple room, but maybe he'll have given jais at the end of a festival day program, it's possible. Mm. I don't think it's going to be very hard and fast. Right, yeah, and that was the point that it's not, um, you know, it's not something like there's specific hard and fast ways that we should actually repeat some rote thing, but there's, um, uh, where did it say? Um, I, I can't remember where it was said, but that, um, before and we know this anyway, if we're going to, uh, say our guru's name, then first we should give some, um, auspicious honorific, um, how do you say it? Acknowledgement at the beginning. We shouldn't just say his name in some sort of haphazard way. Um, and that's why we start saying Jai Om Vishnupad. Da, 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 da. Um, so the Jai. Oh, so in our um, Jaya Tvani. Um, Jai, Jai Saparikara. Oh, so first to the deities, Jaya Saparikara. Do we need to have a file with the... the oh, it's there. Oh, there it is. Is there that yeah. no, but that's, It's the Jaya Dvani. It's not the Jaya Dvani explained. I also thought... No, no. Oh. Yeah. Sorry. Pranashwari is attached to file for everyone. It's in the chat box. But actually, it's the... the it is just the Jayadvani taken from the songbook. Mm -hmm. I thought yes. we found the hidden file because we did have a back to back to basics file of the Jayadvani a long time ago when I was young in Navadip, but we couldn't locate this file anywhere. Mm. But and we have one in Australia, Marge. I remember we went through it in Australia some years ago as well. Yeah, I had, I, I had a file, but you know what happens to files sometimes. When we're not organized like Praneshri David I say, then right. they may drift drift away. Right. But the yeah, the main point is that we can understand what we're saying in the Jayadvani. So in other words, um, we're saying Jai Om 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 we know is also a big yes and Vishnu Pad. So the feet to the the Om Vishnu Pad is an address that they are at the, the Lord's feet like this, Paramahamsa, we know, I think we all know what is, Hamsa is a swan, Paramahamsa, it is an address used for like great personalities that they see only, they filter out the material things and take only the good things um, from us. And then, Jayam Vishnu Bhar Paramahamsa, Parivrajak Acharya, always uh, preaching everywhere, basically. Om Vishnu Paramahamsa Parivrajaka Ashto Tara Shata. 
is uh, just a common expression for uh, 108 Ashto Tarashata, Shri, then Shri, the glorification, the all glorious, all glorious, Bhakti, Sunda, Govinda, Dev, Goswami, Maharaj, like this. This is, uh, you know, so this is explaining when we're giving the jais to our Guru Vaga, to our uh, Guru section, then this is sort of a standard uh, honorific title like that. Mm -hmm. And Jai Saparika, Saparika means along with all their associates and paraphernalia. Guru Gaur, when we sing the deity's name, Jai Saparika, Shishi Guru Goranga, so instead of just like saying it very quickly, we can Jai Saparika, Shishi Guru Goranga, Gandhava Govinda Sundar. So the, the deity's name, along with all of their associates and paraphernalia, everything to do with them. Mm. And then other, uh, other points, we know pretty much, I think, the um, Guru's Jais, and then Rupanuga Guru Varga. Varga means the... the the um, line of the Rupa Nugas, I think this is also clear to us. Nama Acharya Haridas Thakur. Mahaprabhu himself gave that name to Haridas Thakur. And Anantakoti Vaishnava Vrinda means, Kelly? Um, all of the, I didn't get it specifically, but all of the like unlimited, unlimited millions of. of yeah. Right. A koti is a lot. And is it a hundred thousand? I think I it's a hundred thousand. But, it's, millions. Like, yeah. but it's, it's unlimited. Of, unlimited millions. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> the, the actual koti figure, I wonder how much is a koti. But I, I thought I remembered Goswami Maharaj because in Guru, one of Guru Maharaj, in the Prema Dharma Deva Stotram, there's one line, koti, koti, you know, is it, isn't it? Uh, koti Chanda. Ten million is put here. Okay, it says here ten million is a koti. Gandapa koti. But the, what was that, Gandapa koti? Yeah, yeah millions of cupids. Yeah. Anyhow, the point is, it's Ananta, whatever it is. Therefore, <laughs> but here in the Veda base, it's got Kuti as 10 million, but Ananta means unlimited. So it basically means the unlimited number of Vaishnavas. Hmm. And we've been joined by Braja Mohini and Kumkum David Asi. We did give a welcome to, but I'm not sure that she heard us just Here's before. Divi Shakti David Asi. <laughs> And maybe you're all in San Jose, or maybe Braja Mohini's. Where's Braja Mohini, David Asi? Santa Cruz. <clears throat> I'm in an undisclosed Northern California location. <laughs> okay, that'll do. <laughs> that'll do. The West Coast. We're on the West Coast of the States. A distant corner of the world as Srila Guru Maharaj told to Goswami Maharaj when he's going back to California. And, Calum, and Goswami Maharaj said, oh, I was a little struck that we are thinking California is the center of the world, but what's Guru Maharaj's vision? Navadip is the center of the world. And Goswami Maharaj is going to present Mahaprabhu's teaching to a distant corner of the world. So California, and we've got New Zealand, the other side distant corner of the world. We don't have anyone today from Hawaii, which is or oh, not of this world. Uh, yes, Kelly, sorry. Then the other expressions which are coming. You, you're muted, Kelly, I think. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask her that. Okay. Um, then where are we up to? Oh. Shri Baladevi Jibushan, okay, Shri Vishwanath Chakravati. This is understanding our Siksha Guru line, these names. So, yes. Yeah, and then I guess the next word 
Oh, what have we already said? Saparshad? Well, Saparikar and Saparshad, they're kind of meaning the same thing, right, Maharaj? Well, Parshad, Parshad devotees of the Lord are his eternal associates. So those who are eternal associates who've accompanied the Lord to this world. Ramananda Roy, Sarup Damara, Savavam, Vatacharya. Actually, there are so many when we read Chaitanya Charitamrita. So Saparika is all the associates and associated paraphernalia, whereas Saparshad is the um, Parshads, all of the Parshads, the, those of the upper world standard. Mm. So Saparshad, Sri Nityananda Prabhu. You see, we have a, a delineation in Chaitanya Charitamrita, to those who are considered the eternal servitors of Nityananda, those of the eternal servants of Mahaprabhu, and those who are the eternal servants of them both. But some are kind of kick more categorized under Nityananda, under Mahaprabhu. Hmm. So Saparshada, the so all the Parshads of Mahaprabhu, all the Parshads of Nityananda. All right, then. Shuddha Bhakti Vigna Vinashaya. Then tell us that one. Um, I think we might have gotten a little bit stumped at this. Oh no, the um, Shuddha Bhakti Vigna Vinashaya Sri Nishingadev. So um, that pure devotee. Oh, no, no, no. He's the destroyer. He's the. Destroyer yeah. of all disturbances to devotion. Right, 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 right. Um, then, what are we up to? The Vigna is an obstacle. So one who is destroying the obstacles. And so this is an address to Nishingadev who is destroying the obstacles on devotional service, mm. uh, on the devotional path, yeah. Um, then... And, well, Grantaraj, I guess we know. Grant, well, Grant Grantaraj. The, so, Grant is a book or scripture. The Raja of Grantas, the king, king of the scriptures, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Vishva Vaishnava Raja Sabha. So, um, is this correct? The assembly of all the Vaishnava, like kings or sannyasis around the world? Right. The world, Vishva, the worldwide, Vaishnava, devotees, Raja, kingly, Shabha, assembly. So it is um, referring to the, all the great Vaishnavas. And during Guru Maharaj's time, then they would hold the Vishva, Vaishnava, Raja, Shabha at Chaitanya Saraswat Mat. And the senior the preachers of Srila Saraswati Thakur's disciples, they came and they had an annual meeting at that time of, uh, after mm. Goro Hmm. Um, Akaramot, is it Akaramot Raj? Akaramot Raj, Sri Titanya Mot, yeah. Isn't the Akara yeah. is like the original Mot? Um, right, I, it's... And Akara. The mool mat is the central mat, and here I'm looking up Akara, but... We tried to get a definition, but couldn't find one. Okay. So maybe we need to write down what we don't know, and then we can try to find out. Yeah, I can't exactly say, but it is this, something like it. But the central mat is the mool mat. Do we have that written here? No. No. That's why I'm thinking maybe. Akara Mata Raja Sri Chaitanya Mat. So, all right, please make a note of Akara. We need to refer to somebody to find this. And Tadia, Tadia also means all the, as again, all associated. When we do the parikram, sometimes we say, um, the Tadia uh, uh, Mandir Parikrama, the temple and all things within. And then this Shaka Mat. What did you find for Shaka? 
Well, we we were thinking that it was that Tardia Shaka together was the associated mots, but we just like the the, don't the know. like sort of like family Satellite. extended kind of Bran yeah. no, is that bran branches? branches? Yeah. yeah, it's got branches, right. This we've got this as branches. Mm. So we see that the branch mats and everything associated with them. Tadia, Shaka mat. So these are all the branch mats, essentially of mentioning first the main mat, Chaitanya mat, which is the main mat of uh, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur in Mayapur, just as the main mat of Guru Maharaj, or the mat of Guru Maharaj, is Sri, is Sri Chaitanya Sarasat mat in Nabadi. So Akara mat Raja is certainly the Akara we're a little uncertain about, but Akara Mata Raja, Sri Chaitanya Mat. So mm. that is the central mat, the king of the mats, Sri Chaitanya Mat, the central mat of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur in Mayapur. And then Tadia Shaka Mat, key branch, uh, key. So Tadia is as uh, everything associated with them, the Shaka branch mats, Kijai. So giving honor to the main mat and essentially all of the uh, mission of Srila Saraswati Thakur, all of the mats. And mat means mission, ashram. It's a temple and the place where devotees are, not just a temple by itself and no accommodation, but mm. uh, the mat is that. Uh, and then Sri Chaitanya Saraswat Mat Ki Jai. Well, we hope we all know what that is. That's our, our temple. Even that name by Guru Maharaj and explained by Guru Maharaj too, that it is showing that from the line of Chaitanya to Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. Saraswati is referring to Srila Saraswati Thakur that this is what our mat is. It's understanding Mahaprabhu's teaching through Srila Saraswati Thakur. This is our line. And then the next one, what have you got in your homework? Vishva Byapi, Tadiya. Well, we uh -huh. know there's Vishva is meaning around the world, but Byapi, no, not sure. So obviously Tadiya Shakamat, well, again, means the, you know, all the, uh, the various branches, but Biapi, I thought sure. it was actually meaning more like um, not the um, Sri Chaitanya Saraswat Mott family, but all of the Vaishnava branches around the world. Right. It says Biapi is widespread. So worldwide, widespread. Matt, where is it? Vaishnava Worldwide, Vaish, worldwide widely spread everything to do with shaka mat or oh, what do we have for shaka you're the one that did the homework <laughs> well these were the ones that were tricky we got more information about uh, <laughs> paramahansa <laughs> paramahansa shaka means branches maharaj huh shaka means branches in sanskrit shaka means branches mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, we came to that just now. Yes, you reminded us. Hey, you're the native multilingual speaker, Charu. Did he help us out here as you're doing? And, okay, please. So, oh, yes, yes. Tadia Shakamat. Yes, we had that. Sorry. Now, Vishwa Byapi Tadia Shakamat. Right. So, the widespread around the world everything to do with the branch mats. So not only the temples around the world, but everything to do with them. Okay, well, we're safe. Mm. Brindavan, but I don't know why, and I think it's actually a mistake just by hearing them. In the songbook, they do have Brindavan Purushottam Dham Ki Jai. But actually, they're saying Mayapur Dham Ki Jai, Nabadeep Dham Ki Jai. Then Brindavan Dham Ki Jai, Purushottam Dham Ki Jai is referring to Navadeep, Brindavan, and Puri. So, really, in the, it should be Brindavan or Sri Brindavan Dham Ki Jai and Sri Purushottam Dham Ki Jai. Mm -hmm. This is the, the, the way it should be. And 
Then Sri Sada, she, so Sri Govinda Kund Kijai, that Govinda Kund is there at the foot of Govardhan Hill and it is there in Navadip. In Navadip, uh, beside Gupta Govardhan, hidden Govardhan Hill, and it's there opposite our mat, Chaitanya Sarasat mat. And then Sri Sada Shiva Gangadhar. This is the particular name, as we have different names for the deities of Krishna, not that everywhere is Radha Krishna, Radha Krishna. Sure, Radha Krishna, but a certain aspect of Radha, a certain aspect of Krishna from their unlimited names. So similarly, Shiva, the name given to Shiva by Srila Guru Mahar, uh, by Srila Gurudev, Srila Govinda Maharaj, is Sri Sadda Shiva, not the material conception of Shiva, but the pure Shiva, Gangadhar, Gangadhar, who holds the Ganges water on his head. And the dew means deer, means very like deer uh, in uh, uh, relation to deities. But if it's a person, we sometimes hear people addressing in India someone as G or whatever their name is, G. And that is like dear such and such uh, Prabhu, such and such, but in the, for a person is G and for the deities is you. Mm. So this is Sadha Shiva Gangara. This is the deity at Chaitanya Sarasatma beside Govinda Kund, the deity of Shiva. And then Samaveta. Charu, what is Samaveta? I have here Samaveta. Appropriate. Yeah, is, that's how we were finding it as well, but it's not. And Vaishnava Mandal, the whole worldwide Vaishnavas. Mandal is um, like a um, uh, Mandal means wheel, actually, isn't it? Mandal, encirclement, the worldwide encirclement of Vaishnavas. Mm. And Charu, do you know Samaveta? Samaveta, I think. Uh, all together, honoring everybody together. Who assembled. Assembled or united. United. Okay. All right. And what else have we got? So the united, the assembled. Also, the Samaveta means Samaveta. Assembled Vaishnava circle, Kijai. Then back to Vrinda is the back to Vrinda or the devotee section. I'm not quite sure what the differentiation will be between back to Vrinda and Vaishnava Mandal. Harinam Sankirtan. Okay, we can come to Harinam Sankirtan and Nitai Gora Premanandi Hari Hari Bo. And by the way, I've heard that, you know, we are saying at the end, Nitai Gora Premanandi that may Nitai and Gauranga's uh, prema, uh, joy prema, may this be chanted all over the world. This is this Nitai Gaura Prema and Haribo. That whatever else we say, then may their glories be chanted all over the world. Oh my goodness. Kelly, what did we miss out? Abhinava Sundarbhu, what did we miss out? Anybody, what did we miss out? Kum Kum, she, Kum Kum Didi. Out of all of us, you've been chanting Kijai is the longest. Give us, give us a minute or two of your precious time and share something about chanting the Jais after the Arati or at any time. But you need to unmute your microphone. Have to press the unmute button. Maharaj, I don't think I've ever once chanted properly, so really that's not true that I've chanted the longest. But I do recall going way, way back and the, the local GBC person, I was Jari, and so he presented me with 
what we were chanting for these prayers. And it's actually a little bit humorous. We didn't understand what they were and the misspellings were, were um, quite funny looking back on it now. And I don't think that that was the important point. I think that it was that we were trying, you know, we were blessed, full of fault, no doubt, but we were kind of stumbling on. And uh, so somehow or other, it, the process works however imperfectly we are doing. Mm -hmm. And that's what I recall. And actually, I was made the Bajari about one day after joining the temple. <laughs> <laughs> they thought that sort of anybody else could, anyone could do that. Uh, you just needed to, they would just showed me, you know, offer. And I remember coming back from Harinam Sankirtan one time, the whole temple went out and we came back and I was offering the Artik. It was only about the third or fourth time I did it. And I realized that um, I had neglected to bring a flower. And so I didn't think I could interrupt what I was doing. And I looked and in my waist, I had one gardenia that I had offered that early that morning. And then we had been on Harinam for many, many hours and it was quite brown. But I took the gardenia and I smelled it was still wonderful. <laughs> and so I thought, oh, this is all right. And then I checked in with the temple president. I thought the worst thing would be to stop like it's a performance and the show must go on or something. But I checked with the temple president afterward, he just, Oh, this is very, very bad. <laughs> <laughs> but what can we say? Those were what early. <laughs> Didi, what you are telling us, it is also, you know, it is perfect. <laughs> and it's the intention behind everything. And actually, Gurudev, you know Gurudev appreciated the simplicity. He appreciated that we simply do things with our heart rather than with a lot of formality. Yes. Yes, it was definitely not formal. And, and you do know one of my favorite encouraging uh, slokas, and this is to do with the attempt to chant the holy name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's from the Skanda Puran. It was in that little booklet that Gurudev would give out at the time of Harinam. And it's saying about hundreds of so many pious activities can never equal the slightest attempt to sing the holy name of the Supreme Lord Govinda. Mm -hmm. So our attempt to do the worship and to make offerings and to chant the jais, to do something as we understand, oh, we should be doing these things. We're attempting to do it, but it's so valuable. And in the Skanda Purana, it says, Go Koti Danang. We just had that about approximately 10 million, according to what we saw just now. So, Go cows, Koti Danang. Anyway, making a gift of 10 million, or oh, here it says, 10 million cows on Grahane Kagasya, on a solar eclipse, which is meant to be a very good time for giving in charity to, to Brahmanas, etc. So making a gift of 10 million cows on a solar eclipse, residing for a millennium at holy places, like Prayag, where the sacred Ganges flows, performing 10,000 sacrifices, and giving away a mountain of gold. Hundreds of such pious activities, so hundreds of such pious activities can never equal the slightest attempt to sing the holy name of the Supreme Lord Govinda. So we should never take our eye off what we're trying to do. And it's just that by going through the, the various like basic things we do, it's just helping us in our trying so that as much as possible we are feeling what we're doing. And you see, we do need to revise and to learn some of these basic things that we do uh, chant. And we means, you know, I'm in the we department and 
we have gone through this before. I did have a list of them, but I'm also struggling again to think, oh, we're seeing this all the time. What is the actual meaning? But as Kum Kum says, we are trying. Let us try happily with heart. <laughs> yes, Dibya Shakti Devi Dasi. By the way, those who don't know Dibya Shakti Devi Dasi is my twin sister. <laughs> I wanted to <laughs> ask, can you say something about this holy month of Purushottam? It's uh, extremely auspicious, and um, I would like for you to uh, say something about it. <laughs> what? Can you say something about the holy month of uh, Purushottam? This Purushottam okay. extra month. <laughs> it's very auspicious and I've been, you know, hearing about it. We don't hear about it so much. I haven't heard about it so much. In our the main thing, Dibir, is one thing. Don't do anything material this month. Exactly. They exactly. Say they say it's even more auspicious than Kartik. And I was right. like... There's, there's an article link there on scfmat.com. You'll see there's an article by Guru Maharaj. It's translated uh, from an early publication. I don't remember what year, but maybe in 1955, 1956. Yeah. And Guru Maharaj is explaining that this extra month, it comes in the year. And there's nothing assigned for it, for like auspicious material activities. So in India, nobody gets married, they don't buy a new car, new house, they don't sign during this month. They think, oh, this is uh, not good for material activities. So the devotees, the spiritualists, as it were, those who are trying to do some good activities in uh, spiritual form, they're very happy because as you noticed, probably, in India, there are many festivals which are not associated with Krishna consciousness. They are loudspeakers, as loud as possible, very distorted, but for material gain, for doing material things. And so I know in, you know, hundreds of years ago, they didn't have distorted loudspeakers, but they did have, you know, drums and shanais and all the other things, and so many things are taking place for material festivals to try to get material benefit by worshiping the gods. So in this month, none of this is taking place. The devotees, they are free to do devotional service. So yes, 16th of September, 1955, Praneshwari put a link to this article by Srila Guru Maharaj. Beautiful, okay, perfect. And it's published in 1955. I was one month old, just see. And here, possibly, here, possibly, inside here, Guru Maharaj is saying, it's sometimes it's regarded more than Kartik month. Mm -hmm. And the month of Kartik is Radharani's month, that we know. And it's the, the most special month of the year. So, hearing from... Uh, hearing from our masters and we know this month is a special month but you see Gurudev really he just continued he continued with everything during every month and every time basically when we are servitors service is independent of all these other things but when we get some encouragement oh this month I must not do anything material I must only do spiritual things then we're getting encouragement to think yes I'll be a devotee this month. And then we won't give up being a devotee when next month comes. So, Dibya, for you, you have no difficulty. <laughs> oh, yeah, I do. <laughs> she wants to buy <laughs> <laughs> That's not material, though. But not for this month, anyway. If you're doing things for the service of the Lord, it's fine. Like uh, David... Oh, very fine. It's, it's more than fine. Well, she said, like, if you want to buy a new car, but if you use it for service, then. Yeah, if you're in India, you'll probably get a good discount this month. <laughs> buy a car in India and ship it over. No, mm -hmm. they don't want to do anything. There's no holy days. So even the most, Gumar saying, even the most holy months, 
such as Vaisak month, cannot be compared with this Purushottam month. Bhagavan, the Lord himself, has mercifully accepted this month and given it all his power. We know such things by reading the Sri Brihannaradiya Purana. More. Mm -hmm. More. <laughs> oh, well, it's there. Guru is talking the div. He's just pointing out very clearly the difference between devotional activities and the general thing which is done in the world, which is for material activities in the name of religious activities. So we, uh, we need to be engaged in, in Seva. I mean, the very beginning of the article sums up the answer, your, the answer to your question. This year, there is an extra month, Purushottam month. It gives a more favorable opportunity for Krishna Seva. It gives a more favorable opportunity for Krishna Seva. And it is a particularly favorable opportunity for the fortunate jivas. And in Guru Maharaj's English, I mean, Guru Maharaj's expression, it will be Bhagyavan Jiva, Bhagya, Bhagyavan Jiva the jivas who have, who have actual spiritual fortune. Okay, then Guru Maharaj is saying, Purushottam month has all good qualities, just like Bhagavan Purushottam himself, and is considered the crown of all months. Anyway, that's it. So, as if those who are doing 24 hours seva, this month necessary to do 26 hours a day seva. Those who are engaging 100% of mind, body and words in Krishna consciousness already need to contribute 120% only. Then, Did you hear that, Divya? Yeah. Yeah. Did you hear it? <laughs> Abby, did you hear it? <laughs> I'm not. I'm not doing a hundred percent service already, Debbie. But you are. No, I'm not either. I wish I was. That's why I'm here to be with you guys, so I can learn how. <laughs> hey, Krishna. <laughs> so beautiful. And Rukmini Didi has joined us. Welcome, Rukmini and Haridoy Prabhu. Kumaradash, I'm sorry. I'm a little sick, so that's why I'm not. Play my camera. Oh. Oh dear. Get well soon. Thank you. you okay, Ruth Mini. Take, oh. take the best medicine. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna. Hare Hare. Hare Rama. Hare Rama. Rama Rama. Hare Hare. Jai. And and may all the devotees give you their good wishes to get well soon. Thank you. Uh, Shakira, Shakira, ah, Shakira has mentioned here, not sure if this is correct, Akara means form. Akara, so let us see how that fits in with the Akara, what we had. What country? I think she's from Russia. South, South Africa, Shakira is from South Africa. Uh, South Africa. And maybe she found us, or she, uh, she found, Shakira, tell briefly your history, introduce yourself to the devotees, you're with our family. So as you introduced yourself in your, your email, introduce yourself to the devotees. Okay, Dandavat, everybody, dear devotees. Um, I'm Shakira from South Africa, and um, I basically stalked everyone on YouTube before I got the privilege to be here. Um, and yes, yeah, so like um, Kelly, is it Kelly Kadamba? Oh, oh yes. I was saying, yes, yes that um, you do have to come to a certain point of surrender before you um, become serious with your Krishna consciousness. Um, so my background is that um, my mom and my granny and my aunt are all initiated devotees. And so I have been exposed to Krishna consciousness and I've uh, 
had a swaying of devotion, if I could put it that way. So currently I'm um, very attracted to um, just the mood of all the devotees and Maharaj and uh, the teachings. And I like, uh, I am able to understand um, nicely the way um, all the knowledge comes across. And uh, so I've been on a search and I've written um, to Madhusudan Maharaj and uh, asked for some service, not even knowing what I was going to be doing, but just for, I think, association as well. So um, somehow the times were changed and I managed to join. Thank you. Um, and now I'm here. Um, what I'm currently doing is also a, um, I'm, I was trying to read the Bhagavad Gita and then my mom put me in touch with the online course. So I happen to be doing a Bhakti Shastri, which I'm not even sure, but I'm learning Bhagavad Gita as well. Um, so I'm trying in all avenues to become a devotee. All right, well, you're in good association because I've come here to be with these devotees because they are honest, good, sincere yes. people. So here yes. you've come to good association. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So uh, I, I saw your mention, you're saying that Akara means form, but I'm also just spending a little while here looking and I see that Akara with a long A, it says Padma Akara, means the birthplace of lotuses or nice reservoirs of water. Then it says Akara means mines, the way you're taking mining from the earth, getting jewels, etc., jewel mine. And it says Dibba Akara means the sun. So we can also think these do have something in common, that Padma Akara, the birthplace of lotuses, Akara, minds and diva uh, akara the sun uh, where the source of the light mm -hmm. and it says kushum akara springtime which you can say the source of flowers kushuma we know is flowers so these are some oh then form i see oh but you see that's a different word akara is long a long a says form is what you what you saw but in the in the uh, Jayadvani, it's Akara. It's a long A, first one, and the next one short. And then again, we've got Padma Akara, from the lake filled with lotus flowers. Akara Gyanam. It says here, mineralogy. Anyway, so it looks to me that this Akara, long A, and then a short A, is meaning like this the origin or the source this is what we're getting from here and i can double check that before next week and so maybe kali and abby you can go through it once more and we can just make a little list of the words that we uh, didn't know and if there are some that we still need to do a little homework on we'll try to cover that up any missing words we'll cover for next week does that sound good? Well, um, we can't hear you, Kelly. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I was just saying, it sounds good, although I'm not really sure where to look from different to where we've checked now. Together. Okay, so just let us know what we don't know. You can make a little, like a, a list of the, the words, just the missing words, the words that we know, that's fine, but the other words, like we learning today for the Sapa, Pashad and Sapashad, etc., and Saparika, those we got today. And I have a question here about during this month, what about commercial activities? The thing is, make sure your commercial activity is for Krishna's satisfaction and you'll do just fine. But it's not recommended to do commercial activities in general this month. But that is, what can we say? We can also look at another way around. Astrologically speaking, that's the case. But we know in India, Srila Gurudev, he would refer to the calendar 
uh, for starting things and doing many things, especially starting his tours when he would go around the world to start a tour or to start a building, etc. But once something is begun, then he's continuing. Mm -hmm. It's the beginning time of doing something that he would avoid at particularly inauspicious times or that he would try to do at an auspicious time. So building the guest house, building well, another guest, another guest house, starting Govinda Kund, uh, installing deities, etc. The beginning times is always the time which would be sort of checked out. However, when Gurudev was abroad, and I believe it was in London, he told, but the devotees told, uh, uh, told very clearly how <laughs> they asked the Gurudev, Oh, in India, you do refer to the calendar for many things, the almanac, which has got the astrological calculations, but here you're not doing so. And they said, oh, sometimes I'm looking. But that is effective in India, not in the West. It's like the West already is so impious <laughs> that whatever, you know, every moment is impious in the West. So you better do something, Krishna consciousness with urgency and don't delay it's, you know, the, the finer things are for the finer atmosphere. But the West is full of cow killing, slaughterhouses, intoxication, illicit, illicit sex, gambling, all the things they're not meant to do is just rampant in the West. And by the influence of the West is now coming to India. Sorry to say, but we have direct witness of that. We are direct witness. And Gurudev told that the, how fast India has changed. He said, and the television is the cause for this. When we are first in India, the TV, everything was very controlled. And the television, very controlled, very uh, um, moral, straightforward, I like guess. And then with the opening up of India, so many things came to India, including the Western uh, media and standards and things. And we see the teenagers growing up in the universe, and teenagers, 20 year old, that generation in the universities. Shocking. To me, it was shocking. And we went to the university regularly doing programs and uh, really surprised to see. So everything is being affected by Kali Yuga, but very good because we're in Kali Yuga, the right time, the right place in means, the right place. We've got human bodies and we've got association, connection with Mahaprabhu through the Parampara. It's a good time for us. So like Purushottam month, the materialists want to avoid, like it's an inauspicious time, but it's good for the devotees. But take it on a bigger scale, Kali Yuga is in general an inauspicious time because of all the the um, bad things that go on. But it is a very good time for the devotees because Mahaprabhu is giving us the highest goal, Radha Krishna, Krishna Prema of the highest order to everybody without consideration. Only price is a little faith. So, for business, do it for Krishna, you'll be fine. <laughs> and don't stop business, it's starting business. Everybody, all the shops don't close in India because it's a month of Shotam. <laughs> but they may not open a new branch in India in the month of Purushottam. Mm -hmm. Hare well, I, Krishna. I went to a new doctor yesterday. How new? I first met her. Oh, okay. She's not just became a doctor. No, no, but I did tell her about, I did mention the Hare Krishna temple. So that was beautiful. At least she got to hear about Krishna. So that was nice. And Mahaprabhu tells us, whoever we meet, tell them about Krishna. So there you are, Dibya. Very good. And I'm walking here and just walking in the forest with a couple of devotees. And then the lady walking a dog, and like middle, middle age or almost retired age lady. 
She said, are you Hare Krishna? Started to talk, you know, about Hare Krishna, very happily. And yesterday also walking with two, two men and talked all the time walking with these two, two men. They just came by to the kiosk. They have a kiosk here on Saturday and Sunday, vegetarian stall just outside the ashram, which is very good for preaching. And then all day, all of us were with, with people talking. People who would, they're just coming to eat something. <laughs> and then they get Krishnaized by the devotees. Mm -hmm. Whatever you can do, wherever you are, try to tell something, but try to tell about Krishna. And Nityananda will say, try to tell about Gauranga. Yeah, I don't want to do that too. <laughs> What do you think, Ananta Krishna Prabhu, in New Zealand? You see, far away in New Zealand, but close by heart. What do you think, Ananta Krishna Prabhu? Is Krishna consciousness a good idea? Should we tell others? Uh, oh, absolutely. I'd be absolutely lost without Krishna consciousness, to be honest. Um, I would yet, be also, yes. And yet, I don't... Um, often realize how fortunate I am um, I was saying to an Prabhu here um, yesterday, somehow I'm hearing now, but I'm not appreciating what I'm hearing. Um, not really appreciating because I don't know how to talk to somebody else about what I'm reading um, and have the coherentness to keep this storyline correct. Um, I'm still having that problem, but what can you do? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Whatever you know, you can share with others. And what we don't know, we say, I don't know the answer to that, but I know those who do. Our masters are giving perfect yes. guidance. Yes. And do what you're doing. You're associating with an and Prabhu, who is sincere oh, devotee. He will. So fortunate. You can see his nature and you can see how he deals with people. And Jai Goranga Prabhu is there too. Where is Jai Goranga Prabhu? Are you hiding from us? <laughs> Jai Gorang was one of our youngest devotees. He's still in school, but he's a sincere, serious seeker. And one day you'll be one of the old, oldest devotees and you'll have had a whole life of experience. To come to Krishna consciousness at 16 years old is actually, I, I promise you, it is very good indeed. We wish we'd come when we were 16. Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. When you get it done, baby. What was that? Oh, we're just telling him that when he gets his dunga, he'll be made. No, no. Okay, I thought you said that when he gets his dunga. Yes. Sure. All in good time. You're still 16 years old. Sarvabhama Bhattacharya was shocked when Mahaprabhu took sannyasa 25 years old. He said, oh, you're a young man. How are you going to maintain? So then he, oh dear. Then he, Sarvabhama Bhattacharya, preached to Mahaprabhu. <laughs> and the beginning of a wonderful leela when Mahaprabhu was sitting there for, sorry, just give me one second. Mahaprabhu was sitting for one week, day by day, having classes from Sarvabhama Bhattacharya. And then Sarvabhama Bhattacharya said to him, so you're not showing any indication if you agree with what I'm saying or understand nothing at all. And so what are you thinking? You're just sitting there with no expression on your face. For a week I've been giving you classes. Then Mahaprabhu said, then, he, then Sarvabhama said, don't you understand what I'm saying? Don't you understand the scriptures? And then Mahaprabhu said, oh, yes, I understand the scriptures. But what you're saying, I cannot understand. You are giving an impersonal, impersonal um, view of what is clearly very personal. Changing the words around. This I don't understand. So why you don't say anything? And then Mahaprabhu said, oh, you asked, you are so senior. You asked me to listen to you. So I'm listening to you. I'm following your instruction. <laughs> So I very humbly, Mahaprabhu was saying, oh, that's why I'm sitting here. And then Sava woman said, so can you explain it? What are you trying to say to me? And then Mahaprabhu explained and Sava woman Bhattacharya was stunned. And then he became a devotee. Wow. 
Hare Krishna. So all in good time, Jai Goranga Prabhu, step by step. <laughs> and Braja Mohini, did he any anything for us this week? Some injection for us for our Krishna consciousness to keep our, ourselves going? Oh, Maharaj, I don't know why you're asking, but I, I have started to try to read the, um, the Sharanagati that you were um, suggesting that we try to sing some of the songs in the Sharanagati. But, um, so it's very amazing and beautiful to read, as you Jenny. all know, but I haven't read it. In the, so <laughs> um, I re would... Uh, yeah, very beautiful. So I'm grateful that you're reminding us to read that book and to sing those songs. But it's in the full, in, of, yeah. full of hmm. go yes, ahead, Roger, Please continue. No, I was just gonna say, but in the in the book, um, we don't know which songs are the ones to sing. So do we just need to look in the songbook is that the best way i mean i don't know how, which ones we we would know how would we know which ones are from sharanagati my song. recommendation is that at least once or even you can say once a year we can also come back to it is to do the parayan from beginning to end to go through the songbook including the introduction etc cetera, etc cetera. there is so much there and but to go through from beginning to end and so at the end of some of the chapters, the last songs are high, but we can simply sing them as we do with Chaitanya Charitamrita without dwelling on you know, trying to imagine the meaning, etc. too much. We worship those things, but as in Chaitanya Charitamrita, we do not miss out the high parts when we're doing the, the parayan, the continuous reading. And we do not, I mean, this is directly from Gurudev, because somebody, myself, asked him about that when, Guru, when Gurudev, so from Gurudev this is coming. I directly asked him, because some of these parts in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, no, they're very high. But Gurudev said, no, we don't miss out any part when we're doing the Parayan. And the Sharanagati book is very much recommended to us by all of our masters and the Prabhupada. And even Amritam, of course, and Chaitanya Charit Amritam, of course. But how we go through them, then we must go through from the beginning to end, and we keep on our head those things which are above our our pay grade, as it were, the things which are for the pure pure devotees. But we're getting a little hints. We know it's there. We're getting some idea of what is in that higher plane, but we're not delving there and staying there. And there are just a few songs like that in the songbook. Mar Maraj, in the Sharanagati, in that edition of the Sharanagati book, um, so there's the, um, the, the verses, the Bengali verses, and then the English translation. And then underneath, there's like explanation with additional verses and more explanation. Now, is that... Was that translated from, from Guru Maharaj's Sharanagati, all of, all of that, or is that added by, by the editor? Uh, you, can, you can tell what has been added, but in that book, if you start at the beginning, then actually Tyagi Maharaj, who presented this, he has explained uh, what part and how it's all come together in this way. So it is Guru Maharaj's commentary, which is, um, accompanying the song. So what is below there is coming from Guru Maharaj. Oh, okay. okay. And lots of beautiful things throughout that, throughout the whole of that um, book. And including uh, from the front, certainly by Guru, Ma by Guru Maharaj there is some part and by Guru Dev there is some part. Mm -hmm. And when you see there's, I just have it in front of me, in me here. It says, Sri Gorendu Brahmachari Vidyaranjan. And that is Srila Gurudev. <laughs> First, his name was Gorendu Brahmachari. And you see, very beautiful. 
So I definitely can recommend Sharanagati. All right. Yes, thank you for sharing that, Praja Mohini. This is, we also went through complete, completely the book very recently and happily. All right. So for me, it's going to be time to go. We've got other things running oh, today. Oh, Maharaj. Praneshri has been patiently waving her hands in the background for a while. Oh, has now. she? Sorry, yes. I, haven't, I haven't been seeing the screen. Sorry, Praneshri. <laughs> I, I have I have just two, two things to say. One, the Virgin Mohini, we have the link with all the songs because Maharaj gave us all the the playlist for the Sharaganagati songs. Audio, and audio, the audio. Yes, the audio clips. And uh, the second thing, Maharaj, just to let you know, Ashram Maharaj, Bhaktikushu Ashram Maharaj, announced today that a devotee in Peru, Priyakanti Didi, um, she was very, very uh, sick with this uh, COVID and um, sadly she already passed away. So what she announced name? that Priyakanti, Priyakanti Priya Didi, Kanti. yes, from Peru. And uh, she was, um, a, a wonderful preacher. She would go out on Harinam, and the first thing when when they they meet people, she would shout, "Jiv Jago, Jiv Jago!" She was very energetic, very beautiful devotee. So I just wanted to let you know, so you can you can bless you can bless her family because she she she's now okay. She's now okay. She's not suffering anymore, and she's going to her next server but her her family is suffering they will also be okay because their mother or their wife whatever relationship with each of them she is a devotee and so the family we know seven is written in some place seven generations before and seven generations after all get that benefit from the one person being a devotee a devotee is the purifying agent just as we have pollution coming from somewhere, we have purification coming from somewhere. Srila Guru Maharaj gave that example. But thank you for mentioning. And yes, we do hear of devotees passing away a lot. Only one devotee, one lifetime passing away. But every month almost we're hearing some news and here's some news. This is some news just now from you. It is the world of birth and death and we have to be ready we have to be ready and be detached from this world, keep our head looking upwards, keep our head to the upper world and not to the lower world. And yes, may their family adjust like all families do. The great grandparents pass away, the grandparents pass away, the parents pass away. And we think, what, we're not going to pass away? No, completely unreasonable. We are also heading towards the different chapters of life. Okay, Praneshri Didi, many thanks for being a good mother to us all in arranging and keeping us all connected in this way. And we'll see you all soon. And in the meantime, to one and all, oh, look, Tarun Krishna Prabhu arrived. Little Tarun Krishna, you're not little anymore. You're growing up in, there in South India. And I saw dad there too. Where's Jai Kumar Prabhu? That's a photo. That's not, that's not live. Jai Kumar Prabhu, where are you? Dandabad Maharaj. Okay, Dandabad. <laughs> Late comers. Oh, no problem. One moment is enough. Okay, Jai Kumar Prabhu, to all the devotees all over the world. New Zealand, Australia, and here and there and everywhere. My obeisances. And first of all, or let us say, Jai. Srila Jai Srila Guru Maharaj, Srila Bhakti Rapa, Sridha, Dev Goswami Maharaj, Chandra Chajaru, Sri Chaitanya Saransatna, Ki Jai. Jai. Srila Guru Dev, Srila Bhakti Sunda, Govinda Dev Goswami Maharaj. Our glorious Srila Guru Dev, who's taken care of us all for countless years. Ki Jai. Jai. Glorious Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, who has brought us pure Krishna consciousness 
Ah, Dandavat, Dandavat, we're now really we're in San Jose. <laughs> so Jai Shila, Shila Prabhupada has brought a pure Krishna consciousness to the whole world and given us some hope, much hope in an otherwise hopeless place. And Jai Shri Goranga Sundar in San Jose, Ki Jai, Navadip Saparikash, Saparika, Shri Shri Guru Goranga Gandhava. Govinda Sunda Jiu Ki Jai and Jai Shri Harinam Sankitan Ki Jai all the assembled, assembled devotees or in Gurudev's English all the assembled devotees Ki Jai and unlimited tens of millions of devotees Ananta, Ananta, Koti, Vaishna, Vrinda the devotee section Ki Jai Netai Gora Premanandi Hari Vancha Kalpa Trubias Cha Ripa Sindhubia Eva Cha Patitanam Pavanavio Vaishnavavio Namo Nama Dandabat to you all See you in a few days Okay Tarun Krishna Maristudan Maharaj Ki Jai Ask Tarun Krishna to chant Hare Krishna every day and be happy okay Hare Krishna. very fortunate birth dandavan thank you